Hey guys, welcome to our channel. Please click the subscribe button and click the bell icon and never miss another update from Almighty Java. In this video, we will discuss microservices. I will try to explain in a very easy way. I hope after watching this video, it will clear almost all doubt about microservices. What are microservices? Microservices are a software development technique where a single application is not built as a single monolithic application, but is a group slash collection of small services, each of which is loosely coupled, running as an independent process and each of which you communicate with the others through some type of open or at least well-known protocols like HTTP, TCAP, Transaction Capabilities Application Part, FTP, File Transfer Protocol, etc. Here are some examples. Amazon AWS Console the console is a common platform where all services can come together. You can see there are so many services related to compute, storage, database, security and there are many. All services are looks like the independent, name itself is explaining the behavior. If Amazon did not follow microservices, and all services came as a part of one single application, then obviously it was a big mess. Instead of a single application, they selected microservices so now all services are independent. Now for them it's easy to develop or modify or deploy, because there is no any kind of dependency between services. I hope you got some idea about microservices. Here is another example of Cricket Team, from which you can easily co-relate with microservices. In a team, 11 different players, may all are from the different region and different language. All 11 players are independent to do anything which can help a team like they can practice independent anywhere anytime. All 11 players, you can co-relate with 11 different microservices. Independent you can co-relate like the development team is free to choose any programming language or any persistent technology. Anywhere you can co-relate like some microservice team is working in the US, some team is in the UK or India. Anytime you can co-relate with whenever any team wants to deploy their code they can. For a match, they need to come together at the playground so this playground you can co-relate with web application or mobile application. If you are aware then every team there is a coach available who can monitor all players and if someone is not informed then he can replace with someone else. Same way in case of microservices, service registration and discovery is there, which provided by Netflix Eureka Service Registry, who can monitor microservices, we will discuss this in the next video. But for this time you can co-relate Netflix Eureka with a coach. How much flexibility is there, what if all 11 players need to come together for practice at the same place, and at the same time, all have to stick with the common language? I hope, now you can think like what was the problem with developing the monolithic application. If you understood these examples then is coming slide you will not feel any difficulty to understand, some important points about microservices. Microservices are not modules or components of code within a single executable. Microservices are about building individual applications as a group of smaller services. Microservices are small independent applications built around individual functional areas of our system. Microservices freely communicate with each other over well-known protocols like HTTP, TCAP, FTP. They are reasonably small and focused. The individual applications are easy to manage and easy to understand. Microservices are separately written, separately deployed, separately scaled, separately maintained, separately replaceable and separately upgradable. Microservices are not part of a single code base so they upgrade and deploy separately. Microservices do not necessarily need to be written in the same language or framework. So, for example, we have decided to do some implementations in Scala or Python rather than limiting ourselves to just Java. Use the language or framework best suited for the technology and business situation. You can choose different persistence technologies like Hibernate or Mongo for different microservices. Here are the examples of some companies which adapted microservices. Netflix has done a great deal of work to eliminate their monolithic Java applications, in favor of smaller independent microservices and one of the pioneers of the microservice movement. Amazon also struggled with managing its rapidly growing online presence. So notice that it took a long time for a code change to go from a developer check-in, to be running in production where customers could use it. Today, Amazon is perhaps the world's most prominent advocate of microservices. So there are many giant companies adapted microservices like Uber, eBay, Facebook and many more. Why do we need microservices? Before 10 years, 
We only had to think about only web interfaces but now we have so many client technologies, like smartphones, tablets, game consoles, TVs and now even have watches and wearables. Before 10 years, we didn't need to think about different types of persistence and back-end technologies. Mostly everything that we stored in a relational database and these relational databases, MySQL, Oracle, was completely fine. For example in Amazon, search any products or product reviews so search is going to be much faster and robust so if we can get it out from a relational database and use something else like MongoDB, NoSQL, where we can store data in a document because in Mongo we don't have to worry about things like schema changes and it's a lot faster and simpler. Microservices are completely opposite of a single monolithic application. What is single monolithic application? Monolithic means, large, powerful, indivisible, and slow to change. Monolithic applications are an architectural style where a single application is built and it's a single code base. It's small enough and it's pretty easy for a single team to implement features and it's relatively easy to manage source code, and it's fairly easy to test and deploy using the continuous delivery pipeline. Problems with monolithic application What if the system is large and complex, and there are a large number of features that need to be implemented reasonably quickly? Then we need a larger team and then code base also becomes larger, and for large teams are hard to manage large code base. We'll break up our big team into small teams, each one working on a subset of features, and each one dedicated to maintaining their separate code base for a single module of a large application something like a jar. To follow this approach we need to have a separate team called release team, which in charge of assembling our separate modules into the completed application, and then subjecting the entire thing to our continuous delivery pipeline. What happens when some major issues are discovered late in the pipeline during testing? Now we can't deploy the application until we fix that problem. The problem is that the release team is continually working out to try to find out the best version of each team's components to deploy to get the optimal delivery of features versus the quality that we need. They will be putting pressure on the original teams to spit to fix specific issues and specific versions of specific modules. So this can quickly become a big mess, and most of this has nothing to do with coding but assembling and deploying a large application. There are few advantages of monolithic application. It's actually quite easy to understand a single executable even a large one. They are also reasonably easy to test as a single unit at least until they surpass a certain threshold, they are also pretty easy to deploy as a single unit, but there are many disadvantages of monolithic application. There's going to be millions of lines of code. We're committed to working in a single language stack forever. If using Java then we use packages and classes and jars and wars. If another technology comes out that suits our needs better. But now cannot change because we're stuck. We also don't have the freedom to experiment with different technologies. Modularize our application is really subject to the capabilities of the language or the framework that we've chosen. A single developer cannot digest a large code base just can't happen. We are unable to independently deploy a small change to a single component. Benefits of microservices style architecture. A developer can walk in on their first day and get their hands around it. A small team or even an individual can alter it and test it and version it and deploy it or even completely replace it. Easy to understand since they represent a small piece of functionality, and easy to modify for developers, thus they can help a new team member become productive quickly. It's easy for each of these services to be managed in an independent way. If one microservice fails, the others will continue to work. Not only are we able to use the right technology for the job but we can deploy at different times. It is very easy to test and deploy and manage and re-architect and rewrite and scale individual applications. I hope you got an idea about microservices. Next video, we will discuss service registration and discovery which provided by Netflix Eureka. Please like and share this video. Subscribe our channel. Thanks for watching.